Hello, welcome to this episode of Testable Faith. I'm Jeff Zwerink, and I'm glad to have you here today. We're also joined in studio with Kevin Birdwell. He's a scholar community member that is joining us with the Visiting Scholar Program. And today we're going to be talking about whether nuclear power is evil. Kevin, good to have you here today. Thank you. Good to be so, here. I've been looking forward to our conversations here for quite some time now. And, uh, you know, I just... I. I have noticed that the moment you start talking about nuclear power, there's most people tend to have this just kind of almost recoil, like how in the world could we be talking about that? There's a great fear about it. So I'm just, I guess I'll just throw the question out to you. Why is it that we seem to be so fearful of nuclear power? Is that a justified fear that we have? I think it's a lot of misconceptions. I mean, if you look at a power plant, it really, a nuclear power plant is operated much the same way that a, a, a another a different kind of power plant would work, such as a coal plant or a natural gas plant. It basically is producing heat, mm -hmm. and that heat is getting converted to steam, and that steam is uh, being used to turn a turbine and create okay. electricity. The only difference is, is how you create the heat. Mm -hmm. So, so with a nuclear power plant, we're using, obviously, nuclear fission at this point in time because we don't have fusion power plants. Um, I mean, what what... What is it or how do nuclear power plants compare to other types of power generation in terms of safety then? Um, actually, uh, they are among the safest types of power plants when you factor in the amount of power being produced and the and the pollutant factors uh, that are involved uh, with some of the other uh, power sources like coal, for example. Um, it's it's among the safest. It, it would be it would rate with uh, wind and solar as as one of the safest energy sources out there. Mm -hmm. And that's despite a few, you know, well-known accidents. I think a lot of this misunderstanding comes from exactly that, misunderstanding how it works and what it's all about. Um, maybe misconceptions like, um, you know, can it blow up or mm -hmm. what is radioactive material uh, like and uh, what happens to it. Uh, those sorts of things. I think uh, the popular media certainly doesn't help in that regard. Well, it, it does seem like some of this flows out of the usage of nuclear weapons back in the 40s and, and the testing that's gone on since then. I mean, you know, people did just see the uh, dramatic, to say the least, effects of any sort of nuclear weapons. Um, and there's also this radiation that gets uh, permeated on there, which tends to be this kind of invisible thing. So it's a little bit more terrifying in that. But it does seem like uh, there, there's kind of a holdover from that. Is it really as dangerous as that? Or, you know, okay, so let's just go to the, the probably a stereotypical example. You got Chernobyl. Here you got this nuclear power plant that blew up. I mean, why would we not be worried about things like that happening? Well, first of all, Chernobyl would never have happened in the West. The, the design of the reactor is very different from your standard Western reactor. Um, also, Western reactors have, um, and, and, and modern reactors in places like Russia do mm -hmm. have them now too, but um, a Western reactor has a three, at least a three foot width, uh, thick reinforced concrete uh, containment building. Mm -hmm. uh, and on top of that, on the inside, it will have maybe a five eighths stainless steel shield as well. Mm -hmm. um, that is designed to contain an explosion, not a nuclear explosion. You can't have a nuclear explosion from a power reactor because the uranium that's typically used is only enriched by, say, three to five percent. And by enriched, I mean that um, <clears throat> when you dig it out of the ground, it's like 07 percent mm -hmm. uh, uranium two thirty five, and so you have to typically enrich it uh, through. Uh, separation processing uh, to get it up to about three to five percent to what is typical uh, to get the reactivity you need in a nuclear reactor. But that in no way or form is going to ever be able to give you a nuclear explosion. You'd have to enrich it nearly to 100 uh, percent or close to those kinds of uh, to get that sort of a thing. Mm -hmm. So the, the only explosion we're talking about in a nuclear reactor is the potential for a steam explosion because Steam is uh, when essentially nuclear reactors that are used today, most of them use water as a coolant. Mm -hmm. And the water is running through the system at 300 degrees Celsius. So, in order to keep it in a liquid state, it has to be pressurized. 
and that's something like 150 atmospheres of pressure. There are some reactors like boiling water reactors that may be 90 atmospheres, but it's still mm -hmm. under high pressure. And um, the potential there is, is if you had a break in a line or something, that if that water gets out, it will, it will convert to steam, uh, expand 1600X, mm -hmm. and then you have a steam explosion on your hands. And that's what the containment building is for, is to contain that, not to contain a nuclear explosion or anything like that. Um, well, that, that, there's two, it seems to me, two very significant points in there that it's important for us to understand. One is that the level of, or, or the enrichment or the amount of explosive, quote unquote, explosive uranium in the reactors is far away from anything that would generate a nuclear explosion. Absolutely. So we're not dealing with nuclear explosions in a nuclear reactor ever in, in right, that sense. Right. But then also it really has to do with the design of the reactor. So is this just something we have to deal with with nuclear reactors that you've got to have these high pressure water containment systems and that's just what we're going to deal with? Or have we found a way to deal with that where, we're, where that's not a concern anymore? No, you, you really don't. That's, that's the type of design that uh, the U.S. and other countries went with, um, you know, starting back even as far as the 50s. Um, but there are other designs possible. In fact, it was proposed as far back as the 1970s to use molten salt reactors. And mm -hmm. molten salts, they're not table salt, but these are like uh, chloride or fluoride salts. They have lithium and beryllium in them sometimes um, that in their liquid state uh, are from about, say, 450 C up to maybe 1400 C. So uh, if you could use that, instead of water as your uh, both both your substance to contain your fuel but also as your coolant uh, then you don't have to use water and you don't have to put it under high pressure and therefore you don't have to have all mm -hmm. this containment concern so so you need something up in the multi hundreds of temper or hundreds of degrees for temperature with water you've got to pressurize to do that with the salts they're just that temperature at atmospheric pressure. So you're not going right. to have these sorts of explosion events. That, that would right. And the, and the great thing about that also is you can, uh, you know, the higher the temperature in a power plant, the more efficient. Uh, so, so, you know, there's a large percentage of the heat energy that comes out of this that is going to get wasted and not going to electricity. So like with a standard power plant, it might be 33% that actually gets converted to electricity. With something running at a higher temperature like molten salt, uh, you have the potential to go much higher in your efficiency, like maybe 40 to 50 percent. Uh, so, you, so you're wasting less. Mm -hmm. And even that waste heat could potentially be used now by, say, getting up to six, seven hundred degrees C. Uh, that waste heat can actually be used for um, various industrial processes that need mm -hmm. high levels of heat that, that you know, the standard nuclear mm -hmm. reactor wouldn't be warm enough to really do. Well, and it is a sort of case. I know uh, I worked on a, a telescope where we're using old solar power plants and they were using molten salt as the medium to store the heat in that. So it's, right. it sounds like even these salt technologies where you're you're funneling salt around and keeping it at these temperatures, those are pretty reliable and robust technologies that don't have high danger factors that would increase the number of deaths from uh, these molten salt reactors. Right. And, and typically what you're talking about isn't even, you know, those types of molten salts are not going to be containing any kind of nuclear fuel, right. but uh, they, they do serve the purpose of storing heat. And, and in fact, there's, um, there are some nuclear reactors being proposed today that uh, propose to work with, for example, solar power plants and store heat mm -hmm. and be used to kind of back up those power mm -hmm. plants when the energy isn't available. So bottom line, if somebody were to come up and ask you, had 30 seconds to respond, are, newly, are nuclear reactors evil? Should we fear them? What would be your, your quick response to that? I would say absolutely not. In fact, they're the most concentrated power source we have available to us. It's just that um, maybe in the past we haven't always done the best job of, of finding ways to set up the proper safety systems. The safety systems that are being used today, even in non-molten salt reactors, even water-based reactors, the ones that are being built now, they, uh, they have safety systems that are passive. And by passive, I mean um, nobody has to be there mm -hmm. to turn something on or turn something off, that if something happens, it just automatically shuts just down. This works, yeah. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, you know, I've 
found this topic interesting, I would encourage you to go to reasons.org. You can find lots of stuff there that Kevin Birdwell has done. Just search for Kevin Birdwell and you'll get lots of resources to explore.